Good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight for our Village of Elsip committee meeting. Today is September 10th, 2018. We'll call this meeting order at 731. Can you call the roll, please? Sure. Trustee McGreal? Here. Trustee Dalzell? Here. Trustee Zielinski? Here. Trustee Juarez uh, informed me earlier that she will not be attending this evening. Trustee McLawhorn? Here. Trustee Murphy? Here. Mayor Ryan? Here. We have a quorum. Great. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, officers' reports. I'll start with myself. A um, couple things um, I want to bring to everybody's attention. Uh, first, on the agendas, everyone's looking at um, just a reminder. This coming weekend, the village wide garage sale will take place from September 14th through 16th from 8 a.m. till 5 p.m. So it's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and you do not need a license or permit. Uh, to conduct a garage sale at your place. Um, is Becky, how many, how, I know you established a list that, how, does, how do people get the list, number number one? Thank you know what, Becky, you go up at the mic so everybody can hear you. Thanks. <coughs> they just have to go on the village website. We're going to have just their address, and um, there will also be a map that points out where all the garage sales are going to be taking place on all the different days. Okay, so go on to villageofelsip.org. And it'll be right there. They can tomorrow. It's not posted yet, but it will be. It'll be posted, posted tomorrow, tomorrow, Tuesday. Mm -hmm. and you can go on and to see exactly where, who's having a. Um, they won't have their names. They'll just have their addresses, and then right. there's a map that's done of Elsip, and it'll just have the dot, colored dots of what days and where. Okay. How many people do you have on that list? Yeah. 130. 130 people. That's mm -hmm. great. Okay. Yep. There's a lot going on for the garage shell. Okay. Thanks, Buck. Next on the list, uh, trustees, <clears throat> I had a conversation just uh, Friday. That's so why I got on the um, agenda late. Um, I put on here, was a request to adjust compensation for a part-time building inspector, our part-time building inspector, Jim Smith, while acting as a temporary building inspector, um, only until our building commissioner, Roger Early, returns to work after a full recovery from an undisclosed injury. Hours will be limited to less than 29 hours per week with no additional benefits. Just as a recap so everybody understands, right now, Jim Smith, he's been with us um, probably less than a year, very, very good employee. <clears throat> and um, while he serves as on an on-call basis, um, part-time employees like that, we have Jim and we have another gentleman, John, and Brian Larman as well, too. They work on an on-call basis. They're paid $18 for every job that they inspect. So some days they may have none to look at, some days they might have three to look at. Unfortunately, our building commissioner, um, you know, was hurt like in, a, in a, uh, an accident per se, you know, just to be, I don't, I'm not gonna go into that, but he's not gonna be back to work right away. We're, we're probably not expecting him back on, in the office until possibly November. So oh. in the interim, Mr. Smith's been good enough to look out for the annual inspections that the building inspector would have did. But I think that money can get out of control when you look at it. In other words, if we stayed with honoring the $18 per stop, that can get crazy if he's making 12 a day, you know, as far as finances are concerned. So I asked Human Resources to just give me an idea what a position like that pays and again, this is a part-time position that we're talking about, but a full-time position uh, in Cook County for, for being a building inspector is more like $32 an hour to do something like that. You know, in this case, I don't expect Mr. Smith to work more than five hours a day, maybe six in some cases, but I'm, I'm really look, shooting for five. I haven't even had a chance to talk to Mr. Smith yet about this wage because I want to get some direction from the board that's what the board's job is here, is to approve expenditures and policy. But I was putting a number out there to be a little more um, in line with part-time work and not going with this $32 an hour, but considering uh, possibly $20 to $25 an hour for the same work. 
than a, a full-time person would do. But again, this is part-time, and I wanted to get some feedback from the board so I can have a discussion with Mr. Smith. Any, um, I don't mind roundtable on this. Any, any opinion on this? I have no issues with that. I mean, we can't stop inspections just because we have an injured employee. So, in the best interest of keeping things moving, I think it's a great idea. Okay. How about this side? The building inspections have always been eighteen dollars. How many? No, no. He's he's looking at like a, those are job inspections. Like if you were doing, you're putting in a new kitchen in, in your place, and we have to go by to to approve your 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 plumbing and uh, permit. That's what he's getting the eighteen dollars for. Sure. Can I interrupt one second? Sure. Trustee, he's going out with uh, doing the apartment annual apartment inspections. They run Monday through Friday between five and six hours a day all the way to the end of uh, September. What additional requirements are of this inspection as compared to what they were doing before? <clears throat> Go ahead, Tom. Uh, uh, Chief. The difference is, is, is um, Mr. Smith's uh, normally the plumbing inspector. He's taken Roger's place and walking through uh, every apartment, multifamily building in the village looking for um, building department inspections along with our fire inspector. So it's the same inspections that uh, uh, Roger's been doing for the last couple of years as, as um, well as his predecessor also for the annual inspections. Just apartments, uh, those are the only ones that they do on an annual basis. So look for any building code violations compared to just inspecting a, a job through a permit like that would be his normal work. Chief, I, I was under the impression of he's, he's doing these kind of like every day, though. Is yeah, like it's every day, Monday through Friday for five to six hours a day. Right, okay. Right, just on, on the building inspections. I don't know what else he's doing besides that within the building department. I can only speak with uh, the annual apartment building inspections. But even, even on with the building department side of life yet, too, when folks come in, to apply for a building permit, somebody still, I mean, we still have our part-time guys that look out for some of those, which I, I have asked them to step up, and they have as well. But um, occasionally you have to go back to some um, residents or businesses and so forth. We could have code violations that need to be addressed, and that's what I'm talking about, too, is extra work in between those inspections that, that he's being assigned. So sometimes, you know, like he might have three plumbing inspections to look at or carpentry, you know, ins inspections to do, but he might have six businesses and whatnot to look at, too, for compliance. The, the building, uh, the apartment buildings, they probably hit anywhere from 10 to 15 apartment buildings every day, depending on the size of the apartment building and where they're at. <coughs> Besides plumbing, what kind of credentials or qualifications does he have to have him do this job? According to, well, and just so you know, too, Mr. Smith, used to, he was the president of C.J. Erickson Plumbing originally. That's where he came from. And um, according to our building and, um, commissioner, Mr. Early, he says um, that Mr. Smith does possess the, he does possess sufficient building credentials to identify um, inspection that let the police, I'm sorry, that the fire department would be doing on behalf of the village to look for potential issues and that kind of thing yet too so there he's going to be doing the inspections he has uh, starting with last week they started uh, apartment inspections so they're on their second week right now with them i just want to get a grip on this before it gets out of control and then all of a sudden we're looking at a bill for 18 dollars for every stop and all of a sudden it gets out it, 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 again that's why i'm bringing it to the board this evening I personally don't have a problem with the increase in the wage rate for the added responsibilities and accountability. Obviously, his tenure and experience plays into it, and to me that was the exact point, is by adding a person's level of compensation doesn't necessarily broaden their expertise no. in the areas of what we're looking at. Right. So as long as they've got the required credentials to do the work that's to be performed, the added compensation to me only seems fair. Yeah, based on the conversation I had with Mr. Early, he, he did say he's confident in, in the decisions made by Mr. Smith. And currently, Mr. Early is indisposed. I can't even speak with him right now. So, so we're just going by Rogers. Rogers. This is Rogers' recommendation, yes. So we don't have any. Otherwise, we. Any kind of anything from his past or. 
You, you know what, did Trustee, he, in all fairness, I, I can certainly get you his resume that they submitted to us as well. He sits on many boards and whatnot, too, at the same time, you know, as a professional in, in that industry, but maybe not so much in, in the carpentry aspect of things. But um, We'd be doing all kinds of inspections, electrical and everything, correct? Well, no, we've got electrical no. inspectors for, for issues and stuff, but this is just for building Manual compliance. Design. Right, right. And, and also he has come out when we've had a few structure fires in town when Ryder was on vacation and, and Mr. Smith took his place, he came out also uh, to look at the structural integrity of the buildings also. So, I mean, I've dealt with him a couple of times and I felt he's got the confidence and the skills and what he needs to do as a, a building inspector for what he's going to be doing with, with and, the village. And I think because he's going to be side by side with the fire department, they can actually assist in that opinion on, on what they're looking Like you said, when it comes to structural integrity and whatnot then too. But I just want to be able to get a grip on expense, but it's just like I say, so this doesn't get out of hand. And if, if I ask Mr. Smith to work on an hourly basis for, for X, you know, for $20, $25 an hour, this way we, we at least can control what we're going to be spending with them then, too. about this side? I, uh, Trustee Murphy? I would agree um, in the fact that there's no additional uh, compensation as far as benefits go. No, there's not. That's, hu that's huge. So, right. and That's why we're going to keep it under 29 hours a week then, too. Mm -hmm. Um, and well, I would take a, a talk with HR because you can go past the 29 as long as the aggregate for the year. That's fine too. And, um, and I did get this information from our human resource, from Shanae Hunter, and um, just to give me a little bit of direction here as well, then too. So. Do we have a time frame of how long this position is going to last? You know what, Trustee? I'm told that Roger probably won't be back here until maybe mid-November is, is when we're looking for him to be back in action, where he can actually be moving around and whatnot then, too. So I'm, ho I'm hopeful for that, for that time period. So, yeah, this won't be a long time, but I'm, this, this, what we're talking about this evening, this could last about two months. Mayor? Yes. Um, I think Trustee Giselle has a good point about the 29 hours. Um, it's looked at a couple ways, both uh, for the whole year, which obviously this wouldn't end up, this is such a small portion, but it's also looked at by the job uh, title and in, in, in general responsibilities. So there can be a spike here and there, and even that wouldn't be a problem. Okay. And again, to give you like a small example too, I had, I had a business in my office on Thursday, I think, or, and um, they were cons they, they're going to be bringing some additional business uh, to our community in the next year, and they were asking about having a job trailer out there. And I said, well, we, we allow those kind of things on a temporary basis, and they were looking for more on a permanent. But those are the kind of calls that they go on as well, too, is to police those type of matters and stuff then, too, So, is, which is why I want to cover this type of an area. Okay, I'll have the conversation with him, and... Um, I'll certainly coordinate with everybody. I'll let everybody know what the decision was on that, too. I, I can't speak for him that he's even willing to do it, but temporarily he's been doing it so far. Otherwise, we'd end up subcontracting that in some capacity. Uh, and we're starting all over again then, too, to bring somebody in to, to fulfill those obligations that we have. We don't have, we, you know, we're very thin structured here, so I'm trying to do the best I can with, with the personnel available right now, then, too. Mayor, I um, just want to, for the record, say I agree with what Trustee Dalzell said. And the only concern that I would have is that if there's any special certification that he would need that he doesn't have, even though we know he knows the job through what Roger says, right. which is fine. But as long as there's nothing else that's required just for the liability sake for the village. You want, uh, and that's a fair question, Trustee. I'll, I'll have legal uh, we'll okay. give us some back in return, too, so we're all covered on okay. this as well, too. So we don't accept liabilities that we shouldn't. Right. Right, no problem. I get that too, no problem. Uh, next, I wanted to bring everybody's attention that um, I, I spoke with one of our residents recently. Um, she lives over in, um, Rocio, do you want to come up for a minute real quick? So in case there's any questions here for you. Um, this is Rocio uh, Rispero, and Rocio lives over um, near the 120th and Hamlin area. And she has a pending contract, right? Correct. Okay, she has a pending contract 
for the property we've discussed a few a couple of times over at 120th and Hamlin where somebody originally was going to build nine homes on the old Fotopolis property that was over there and stuff then too mm -hmm. so Rasil's you put in you you made an offer on this then right Correct. yes all right you haven't purchased it yet though not at so. the moment no. okay so you and I just talked on Friday that which is why I wanted to bring this in today correct um, wanted to just get an opinion from the board and certainly I'm going to defer this to the Planning and Zoning Commission as well but as opposed to, to installing or building and Rocio is not a contractor but not at because all. you do you, know, you you were able to purchase this property at an auction at, at a great price apparently then, correct so. okay so the property itself I'm, I'm not sure of exact acreage but it's basically 140 feet wide by 464 feet deep and this, this is a big piece of property it was actually back in 2007 the plan zoning commission actually designated this as like jackson it was called jackson something or other subdivision where they actually divide this in nine parcels and each parcel would have been 50 feet wide by 140 foot deep to build nine homes on, on each and that still still allowed for easements and whatnot then too Rocio, what she's considering anyway at this point is possibly just putting in two homes that would face Hamlin Street. So Hamlin, the width on, on that area would be 140 feet wide. She's dividing that in two, so you, you're 70 foot wide per property, but you're still 464 deep. However, 120th Street, which is just the north of you, which I told you on the phone too, we, we won't give up our rights to that property in case we ever decide to, to complete the street because the street doesn't go through the street only goes from Springfield to Avers I believe right now Correct. or Harding to Avers right yes. Harding to Avers which according to the plan at least the drafted plan that I got from um, that was in our, our records here you could probably put three pieces you could probably put three homes on that parcel in that half a block area you know in other words you could put three 50 by 100 homes on that spot but I guess the reason I'm bringing this up to the board tonight is I'm Wednesday night the Plan and Zoning Commission has a meeting which I'm going to defer to them for a little more direction but does does this board have a problem with because she wants to get as much direction as possible on this deal and I did Mike uh, Freighter I did speak with Danny Triben from water as far as utilities are concerned and I spoke to Rocio about this too water and sewer I'm sorry yeah, water and sewer, uh, water and storm sewer are nearby, but you don't have any sanitary sewer at this location. So she does understand there's going to be some considerable cost to bring a, uh, a sanitary sewer to this location because you're going to have to go into the properties probably to the north between Hamlin and Avers to pipe in that line to bring it, to bring it south. I did get a, a few months ago when we had a builder ask about the same property, I had our, our building our, our village engineer from Robinson he gave me an approximate for like three hundred thousand dollars to do that that could have been based on the nine homes but even nonetheless it'll be a little bit less than maybe just talking about two homes but I'm just telling you Rocio like I told you on the phone the other day this could be considerable just to bring a sanitary sewer there we looked at the property the, uh, the water commissioner and I looked at the property um, Thursday or Friday night Friday night and um, I says, how did the Photopolis house sit there without? You know, because there should have been some there. He goes, I think that was actually on a, um, a septic system back in the day. You know, because it was it was outdated. House has been leveled. The footprint's still sitting on our plans here and stuff then too. So, Rocio's question to us was, and you need to work out all the you know your own businesses, your business taxes and stuff like that. But Correct. do we have a problem with her putting two homes on that property facing Hamlin? And that's what I was just bringing to the board here because she's going to. She's going to talk to Plan and Zoning and see if she can, if she's eligible to build three more at the back. She might just have a couple of big backyards there. This isn't exactly the plan that was outlined for the so-called subdivision, but she wanted a little bit of direction from us if we have a problem with her facing Hamlin. I should probably ask you first too, Mike. Is there a problem with doing that as far as public works? Okay. So the driveways would be going, entering Hamlin from, from Hamlin Street. Hamlin. Yes. Yeah, I don't have a problem with it. Okay. It's already zoned that way, so. <laughs> Actually, they were zoned the other way. It was, oh, you're right. They were zoned for homes, but the homes would have been facing northbound. But now you're going to just take two homes, and they're going to face east. 
is what it's going because you're on the west side of the street. Mm -hmm. Correct. With the possibility of adding with the possibility of of adding homes. Yeah, at the at the back side of the property. Time. Correct. Because I told her it'd be a, it'd be a shame to waste that property if you can you know keep bring a developer and maybe somebody wants to buy that back end of there and stuff then too you know and and buy the back end of the property is what I'm trying to say so it's yeah locked. Yeah. Uh, yeah it would be. So that, what I'll do then, Rocio, is, um, so obviously it seems positive on this end. And that's why I wanted to just, I didn't want it to just be my opinion. I want, certainly everything I do is, you know, we do, we do have a board here. And the developer's lawyer was the one who contacted me and was like, hey, I want you to know why this didn't go through before you continue investing any more money. So I spoke um, with someone else that kind of guided me and said, hey, talk to Mayor Ryan, make sure you talk to the planning and zoning, talk to the committees, make sure that this, so everybody's okay on it before you invest well, yeah. um, the last the gentleman, money. though, wanted to do the development, but he wanted this village to assume the costs for the infrastructure without any impact fees for those people who were purchasing the properties. And as the mayor said, that was significant. So, and, and I explained to you on the phone, we're not, financially, we're not participating in any of this, other than we're, I'd like, we, want, we do reserve the right to keep the 26 feet, which is not included in this 140 foot width. Correct. There's a 26-foot area for a street that could go through sh if and when we decide to invest in something like that. Correct. Okay. And when I had spoken to Roger back in July when <clears> I <throat> had the thoughts, he's the one that suggested, hey, you need to talk to somebody because according to the plan, they have to build that through street. So I'm not sure what's going to happen. So I'm glad you guys will be okay if we build two homes. Yeah, I mean, we, Mike, we, we maintain that, that, that easement right now, right? Okay. And we'll continue to maintain that 26 feet to the north yeah um from hamlin back to avers but as far as the original plan went this does deviate from the original plan even though we, there was a plan to build homes there that was my whole point uh, and i will speak with the planning commission uh chairperson to let him know what we spoke of and he'll he can discuss this with his group just to give you a final blessing as far as doing this i don't think you need to have a hearing of any type because this has already been approved for subdivision, but I just want to get the plan approved and you know, help you put you in the right direction to have your plan approved on what you want to do. Okay. Okay. I appreciate that. Thank you guys, and also thank you so much for knocking out that down, knocking down the house across the street from my home. Oh, that's right. She, she lives across <laughs> I live the street right from across the, the street. House. I was I the one that was complaining place. for the last five years. <laughs> yeah. So. Thank you guys so yeah. much. It's it's beautiful to see open space. And just so everybody knows, we had a an, an uninhabitable house at a 3725 120th place, and that's been empty for about five or six years, and that was not repairable. And um, thank you to the board. We did approve monies to demolish the house. We took down the house, the garage, and even a built-in pool. And the trees. And the trees. I mean, that thing is nothing but gravel or dirt right now then, too. And um, we are, I have to wait 30 days to go back to court to get rights to the property so we can resell that. So we're going to sell that at market value to uh, whomever. And you're going to get a brand new house built on that property, uh, too. So it's, it, they'll brighten up that neighborhood. And your neighbors, including your, you guys are obviously deserving of that. You've been very tolerant over what you had to deal with over there. I'm telling you, I was when I first got elected, I wanted to go over there and throw up Band-Aids all over that thing. I, I would have ran out. I mean, it, it was ridiculous <laughs> how, how, how bad a shape that thing was in. Right. But um, thank you for your patience on that as well. Thank you guys for all of yeah. your hard work. Sure. I appreciate it. Thanks again. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, <clears throat> next I had on here as well. I uh, just wanted to clear up here. I had a meeting today with um, Chuck Geraci, who's our Director of Emergency Preparedness. Hey, Chuck, can you come up with a mic for a minute, too? I don't want to like throw you to, throw you to the, the sharks here either. I, I just want to have a, a quick discussion. Uh, <laughs> No, this <laughs> thanks I get for sitting next to him for all those years. Yeah, <laughs> so I want to read this. Uh, this is a, um, a notice that we got from um, Chuck. Fortunately, did another great job. Um, recently, Chuck got an $8,200 grant, uh, which we have to match halfway with. 8500 8500 Matching uh, to Village Side would be 4250 $4, And who was that from again, Chuck? ComEd, and it's through the Metropol Metropolitan Mayor's Caucus. Okay, and that was for a trailer to, to house all of our gear for the CERT program. Yeah, as we spoke in July during the uh, appropriation, last uh, budget hearing, if you will, uh, 5000 was for a trailer and then another 3500 towards equipment and things. That's okay. what the uh, grant was about. Okay, and... Um, matching grant, matching grant. 
Exactly. So, again, for everyone, CERT, it's C C E R T stands for Community Emergency Response Team. Correct. And Chuck, you've done a nice job with recruiting. What do you have? Twenty-eight volunteers on that. Twenty-seven group? and one uh, one that couldn't make the final exercise, which she's in the process of making things up. So it'll be twenty-eight. The next CERT course is scheduled to start next uh, May first. Okay. In which we appreciate all those that volunteer to help. And again, they assist uh, village services, police, fire, and whatnot, both in emergency and non-emergency um, needs. Uh, we did just get a notice. Uh, dear El I want to read this into the record real quick. Dear Elsa, Department of Emergency Preparedness, congratulations. The Walmart Community Grants Team and Facility Number 3601 are pleased to inform you that your community grant application for request has been selected to receive a $2,500 grant uh, from Walmart. We are thrilled to support your work in our communities and share your desire to provide local impact. By receiving this grant, you are part of a long history of Walmart's commitment to giving back to the communities where we operate. In fact, uh, Mrs. Helen Walton used to say, it's not what you gather, but rather what you scatter and tells what kind of life uh, you, have, you, you have lived. Uh, we encourage you to s celebrate this grant publicly. We hope that you will consider doing the following four things. One, connect with the store manager who chose to support your local cause and let them know that the grant check arrived safely. Two, work with the local store manager to announce this grant. Three, consider sharing the work that our grant supporters on, uh, on social media our social, I'm, I'm sorry, our associates and customers like to see the impact we are making in our communities. And four, review the Guarantee Welcome Toolkit uh, at the link. Oh, there's a link that shows all the different uh, contributions and as far as the toolkit, what, what we're eligible to, to do with it. Basically, we can do what we, what we need, want to as far as emergency preparedness goes. And again, congratulations on your grant award. We are eager to see it see its impact in your community. Uh, Kabir Kumar, Senior Director of Community Giving, Walmart is giving. So great job, Chuck, uh, about bringing in another uh, grant. I shared course. with the assistant manager, the manager last year, of course she's pretty busy just as we all are, never got around to it. And I shared with an assistant manager who was pretty, uh, pretty high in the CERT program because I showed her the brochures, the flyers, went through all of that and she actually did some arm twists and got back to the manager and I appreciate their help, and I've actually got two other Walmart locations. The, the nice thing about this Walmart grant is there's no strings attached, so you don't, uh, you know, it's not a matching grant. It's the whole thing. It could be used, you know, like I said, I was promoting, promoting the equipment needs and different things for CERT, and you can put in for more than one area Walmart, which I did. So I have two more out there. The other Walmart, and this actually was approved by the uh, one in Crestwood. I've got one uh, in the works possibly in Bridgeview and Evergreen Park. But I don't, I don't know whether I'll get them or not. It doesn't hurt to try, right? So, so there's two others, and I was happy that this one came through. Uh, me also. I, I think you did a nice job putting out an application for this. All right, that's the good news. The other, the other news I, I need to share, because one of the trustees already, you and I talked earlier about a couple of invoices that mm -hmm. need to be approved. Uh, just as a reminder to the board, while the board does approve expenditures and policy, uh, is always our, our biggest focus, uh, I have reminded all department heads at a couple of our last department head meetings that, uh, in, in fact, even myself and the finance director and everybody else, by ordinance, all conferences need board approval, okay? Chuck was, in, in all fairness, Chuck was not in on, on those meetings. In past practice, because with the conversation you and I had today is I just became aware of this a couple hours ago. Um, past practice was if it was appropriate you guys used to be able to go to conferences well, if I could stuff. speak to it it past practice over the years 14 years as chief speaking for myself two mayors and then under your uh, leadership you know as well once the budget was was appropriated you had to follow of course the uh, reimbursement sheet the conference seminar training expense report and after that point um, there was no no need to do what you informed me uh, t today, uh, other than following the parameters too by ordinance that we were aware of as department heads as to how much money. I think off the top of my head it was up to thirty five hundred dollars that you could deal with on your own without having to continue to go back to the board, which was appreciated, of course, as fire chief because you can 
and other departments as well because sometimes those bills can be, you know, substantial amount. And then above those amounts, you needed to go to the next level and get further approvals, if I remember right, from that up to 10,000. And that's, we follow those parameters. Never did I need to uh, do what you're asking now, right. put in for it. So I wasn't aware of it. I don't have a problem with it, can do that. But Understood, that's. Chuck. And as Chuck says, and Chuck was our, our fire chief here for 14 years. So this isn't, so anyway, past practice, it was that, as Chuck said, was if it was a, if it was appropriated, then you're okay to use it. I've made it clear to Chuck that this board has made it clear as well that we're going to follow ordinance. Ordinance says that all conferences need to be approved. As an example, even this evening on our fire report, uh, the fire chief needs to go to his annual conference down in Peoria for $700, and the chief's asking for permission to do that and stuff then too. So uh, I will tell the board Chuck did participate last month in a CERT conference um, at a cost of $921. That was the two weeks ago, a little over two weeks ago, yeah. which just FYI to the board, you know, it was no secret or anything like back in March March uh, 6th in the, in the budget, I had on there, if I could read, the 2018 Nationals Under uh, Education Department Training 4296060, the 2018 National CERT Conference. Uh, other training continued education opportunities include conferences, seminars, and IEMA's annual training summit that is held in Springfield, Illinois, which I went to last year at the exact same time in September. This was not on the radar. Nothing was said then. It's pretty much identical for the IEMA conference that I right. put in for that you see there. The, conferences, uh, the conference provides an, uh, let me back up here. And then also the 2018 National CERT Conference will be held in Naples, Florida from August 23rd to 25th, 2018. This conference provides an excellent opportunity for CERT program managers instructors and volunteers from around the nation to share experiences, training, and drills with each other. And I specified attending the national conference is highly recommended by FEMA. That's the Federal Emergency Management Agency of which CERT falls under. They sponsor and promote it, the Federal Emergency Management Agency. They have these CERT training, uh, CERT uh, teams, if you will, across the nation. And this particular year, uh, every two years, they have a national conference. It was in uh, uh, Florida at this time, the national conference, where people from all over the state came. Two years ago, I understand it wasn't there at the time. It was in California. Two years from now, it's going to be in Missouri. So I put attending the national conference is highly recommended by FEMA and the new Lenox CERT. All pertinent hotel and traveling expenses are included in this line item. Okay. So as I explained to the mayor t uh, today, despite the fact that the budget line item went from the 45, I was hoping for it to the 31. This, thankfully, was not cut. It was part of the appropriation. Not knowing of this change, if you will, or uh, following the, the ordinance, um, I was up front from the very beginning. Oh, so. no. And I'm not saying anything different, Chuck. Well, I mean, I'm just, just for I appreciate the explanation, too. That's great. Just, just, just so everybody knows that it was there in case they're like, well, look at the cost. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go to the conference if it wasn't highly recommended by the federal government. Remember, I just started a cert team, if you will, and we never had anything like that uh, this past year. It started in May and ended in June, and it's quite a lot of work from beginning to end, and it was highly recommended by FEMA and then uh, New Lenox CERT, the uh, coordinator there who's been doing these CERT teams since 2009, and he had told me, uh, he found out about it three or four years after he began CERT, and he said had he known about it, he would have gone because there's a lot that you can glean from that which will help you in the long run. And so that's how it came to my radar. Right. And again, as I said, trustees, you know, we did appropriate, but now Chuck does know our position. We want all conferences approved before they take place. So we're clear on that now. Could I ask one quick question? Sure. I asked it to you, Mayor. I said this would be the, you know, let me know how you want me to do this moving forward. As you know, both the Florida conference and the IEMA conference, that comes up months in advance. Okay, so I, in order to, to do what you're doing, I would almost have to in March or May or as soon as possible, as you know, we went all the way to July but as we were still talking about it, uh, you know, I'd have to pick a time to ba actually put it through the board for approval, whether or not it's, you know, even if it's appropriated, I'd have to do that months in advance. Otherwise, you know, it would be appropriated. If I give the bill f to you now, for example, then it's going to come out of my pocket the well, you know the money. No, so that I was my said, concern. As soon as you got, like I was, what I said earlier, as soon as you got, as soon as you have dates, present them right away. You know, like maybe sure. at the same time I'm putting in for the airfare sure. or whatever the case might sure. be. Sure. So then because that's what I'll do. This way, 
nobody can say that we weren't notified early enough, yada, yada, and stuff, too. So I want to make sure we're, we're all playing by the rules, especially when it comes to ordinances. We have to adhere yeah. to the ordinance. And I'm always very careful, as you just saw in the red, to make right. sure that, that it's, you know, open and transparent as to what monies are going for and what the situation is, you know. Understood. And that's what I'm saying. We, I've reiterated the same to all the department heads in the last couple of months yet, too. So you, you weren't. Um, you weren't present for those meetings, and again, this is where we got this straight with the chiefs and everybody else. And I'm stuff. not involved as a part-time employee in those meetings, so I wouldn't know that they were discussed unless I had an opportunity to. And so it was first brought to my attention today, actually, when I met with the mayor. So. No, uh, we, no, I appreciate the explanation. Thanks, Chuck. And again, I want to let the share it with the board so we're being open with everything we're talking about here. And I'll, I'll make sure I get that to you as soon as possible in the future. Right. You know, with regards to that. Okay, okay. thank and, you. And just so you know, Chuck, this is not an ordinance that this board created. This ordinance has actually been on the books for a while. It's just the previous board chose to ignore it. Well, that's, and, and the mayor explained, did a good job explaining it to me. I just was honest with him. I said, you know, in, in 14 years, you know, and then up to this point, it's it, it's honestly news to me. We were following sort of the other ordinance that we said, and and I would have complied with it back then and will now, you know, had I known about, about it. So Understood. And thanks for gi right. giving me the opportunity to explain that. Sure. Okay. And thanks, actually, obviously, thanks for attending, though, too. It makes us a better community and makes your your, uh, your group better, too. Certainly, it was true that both conferences, I shared with the mayor, too, and I think I mentioned to you, to the board before, I'm, I'm happy to report at the uh, the annual IEMA summit through the Illinois Emergency Management Agency, they're the ones who do something similar each year at the state level. And at the state level, and again, last year we did the same thing. It's a three-day conference where all the emergency managers get together for training and at the conference, and they also hand out the uh, recognition, if you will. And I was, uh, if you meet the certain uh, uh, training, and I was able to, uh, uh, I officially became an Illinois professional emergency manager this year. There was a lot of work involved with experience and training and past experience in different categories that you need to meet. And so they, they handed out the awards at the ceremony for that. So. Um, officially an Illinois professional emergency manager now for uh, the state of Illinois and of course representing the village of Alsup and then three years from now there's a renewal so you know, once you think the work is done it's not because they, they get pretty much put through the mill again but uh, I was very know. happy that my wife came down for that so just just let the board know understood and we'll get a copy of his cert certification everybody too just to let you know what Chuck got okay. right. thanks, thanks, thank Chuck. You. thank you thank you congratulations yeah. uh, just so everyone knows, it's, uh, in case anyone wants to look it up, it's section 15 and a half, 42.1. And there is dollar amounts in there. Is, it's not just board approval. There's dollar amounts in there as well. So if anyone needs more specific information. Okay. Thank you. Uh, that's all I had to report. We'll have the clerk's report. Uh, thank you, Mayor Ryan. We have the presentation and approval of the August 27th, 2018 Village Committee meeting minutes and the presentation of the August 2018 FOIA report. That is all, Mayor Ryan. Okay, thanks. Uh, public forum. Anyone in the audience wish to address the board this evening? Nobody? All right, thank you. The standing committee reports, finance, Trustee McLaurin. Under finance, I will have the usual list of payroll and accounts payable for approval. And that's all under finance, Mayor. All right, and then the fire committee, Trustee McLaurin. Um, I'm going to do number two first. Uh, request for approval for Chief Staczynski to attend the Illinois Fire Chiefs annual conference from October 14th through the 17th in Peoria at a total cost not to exceed $700. Then next is discussion of the extension and or cal uh, cancellation of the Caltron Fire Alarm Monitoring Service. This has been a a hot topic for for several months now and in light of the contract expiring in a few months um, before we get into the situation of automatic renewal it's just something we need to decide as to whether or not we want to continue or do we notify Caltron that we are discontinuing okay. again for the benefit of the public all the time just so you know what a Caltron is it's a fire alarm system that the village uh, Mandated by ordinance back what year, Tom? Maybe 2000. 2008. 2008. That um, any existing business and some apartment complexes, right? Correct. Participate as a direct connect to our uh, dispatch in, in the event of a fire. So, um, if you, once you're 
once your fire contract ran out with an existing supplier, it could be ADT, it could be many different companies, uh, you were mandated to switch over to the Caltron program. So, All right. trust, uh, Trustee, did you want to lead the conversation? Or? Well, um, I think as, as you know, I mean, so the, the board's in a position of you know, basically, you know, we don't want to be in the alarm business. <laughs> Right, and I, and I understand it. And we've, I mean, we've had extensive conversations over the last couple of years uh, because the business is owing money and stuff like that. Um, I did ask uh, our secretary to uh, uh, make up a report uh, based on information to go over some of the Caltron. So the top half of the report um, she received from uh, Karen in Finance. Uh, at the very top, it talks about uh, the revenues um, that we bring in from Caltron. Right. And Caltron is nothing more than, it's a fancy name for a radio alarm. There's a lot of different ones that are on there. Caltron is just a brand. Uh, and one of the reasons why it was put in place is to save businesses money uh, at the time. Um, there wasn't a lot of technology in radio boxes, so everybody was using phone lines, AT&T, uh, which were very costly. Um, the other thing is, is because of uh, the age of some of our areas, they were also very unreliable, especially during storms, uh, where we could go on as many as 50 or 60 trouble alarms because water gets in the phone lines, sets off the alarms, and uh, then the alarms are out of service for a while. So the Caltron radio alarm system was designed to minimize false alarms, uh, minimize um, trouble alarms, if you will, and, and had a, a better system of getting the signal to our dispatch center uh, through a direct to connect or the radio alarm system itself. Um, when all this started, and I stated this before, I, I was a firefighter, I wasn't an officer, I wasn't a chief officer. Uh, so I kind of inherited it in 2012. Um, the original system was put in place when uh, um, Joe Schmidt was one of our deputy chiefs, um, and also um, uh, Greg Palumbo was our finance director. Um, so and this is based off a few other towns that, that put this in place. Um, so they control most of it. The original intent, um, speaking with uh, the gentleman quite a few years ago, was uh, one of the things that they looked at doing was grandfathering everybody for five years. In five years, everybody would have to go to the system well, that never took off for uh, whatever reason. Uh, so again, I kind of inherited this in, in 2012. Shortly after I became chief, um, Greg Palumbo um, retired and went, and went somewhere else. And then uh, we had a new finance director. Um, and really nothing was done with the contracts or nothing was done with the Caltron system. We kept getting bills. We kept getting information or, you know, the, the money in or whatever, but there was no way following up on it, so it sat for several years. Um, and then somewhere right around 2015, we took it over again. Uh, we received a whole box of contracts with no order. I mean, it was, it was just a nightmare trying to catch up because at the time, I believe we had over 200-something different contracts, so we had to sort it all out. Um, so going back to the sheet, so if you see 2016 all the way to 2018, we only went back four years. Um, our year is fiscal year from uh, May 1st to April 30th. When we deal with cross points, it's normally calendar year, so there's some overlapping on here as well. So some of the numbers kind of look kind of confusing, if you will. Um, the second set down below also shows what our expenses are. We pay $10 a month to Crosspoint Sales. Crosspoint Sales is our vendor for the Caltron system. So for $10 a month, they send out the building. Um, they maintain the boxes. They do send a signal out to make sure every box is working. And uh, again, they do some of the repairs on there as well, as well as connect uh, new businesses to the system as well. So that's what our outlay, outlay is. Right now, we charge $65 a month for a radio alarm. It was 80. 80 was a very reasonable, cheap price back when it started. Much cheaper than uh, two or three hundred dollars a month for uh, AT&T phone lines. Uh, but as like everything else, technology gets better. There's there's more companies out there, and um, our prices were too high. And that's why we reduced it to be more competitive. That was out there. Uh, the biggest benefit, again, is being directly connected to our dispatch center right now is in Oak Lawn. Previously, previously was in our dispatch center. Um, 
the, the next thing, the next uh, section below talks about the number of Keltron boxes installed. So you can see from 2015 until 2018 where we are at. In 2017, I believe, um, 2016 the ordinance passed, but it began in 2017 that any uh, business that had a current alarm contract, uh, when their contract was up, they couldn't uh, auto renew and they had to switch over to Keltron system. So that's why we've seen a spike in numbers as well. Uh, currently, we have 338 boxes in service, and we have another four to five businesses that are looking to switch over because our contracts are up as well. So, um, also, when we, we passed that ordinance, we started issuing MV tickets for businesses that weren't compliant. Um, and I know we had the discussion of uh, either issuing tickets. Uh, pulling their business license, so on and so forth, or closing them down because they didn't have a uh, current fire alarm system. So we've gone back and forth with it, and uh, the board at the time uh, agreed to issue a municipal violation ticket to recoup our costs and also provide a fine with it as well. Um, we try working, uh, trying to find a solution with the building department where um, when their business licenses were up, that whatever fees were owed to us, they would be collecting during the business uh, license renewal. Um, but at that time, they did not have the technology or the capabilities of doing that on their records management system. Uh, we haven't revisited it uh, since Roger took over. I know they've made some changes in there as well, and I'm, I'm sure that's possibly a viability at this time also. Um, um, 2017, we've issued uh, 42 tickets. Um, and, and this information from, came from uh, the one clerk in uh, the police department right now. It shows we didn't uh, issue any tickets in, in 2018. And, and how they issue a ticket is if you miss two cycles in a row of payment, that's when you get your municipal violation. Um, cross points bills quarterly. So every three months you get a bill. So it's usually January, April, um, July, and then I think uh, November, somewhere right around there. So however it works out throughout the year. So if they pay the first cycle, don't pay the second cycle, they don't get a ticket. If they pay the third cycle, they don't get a ticket. We just go back after them for what they owe us with it. Um, up to December 31st of 2016, uh, we agreed because how much money was owed that we would send them to collections, okay? During the downtime when the, the, the um, Caltron was not being my, maintained by anybody, we also, our dispatch center, uh, ELSA dispatch center, also used to dispatch for Crestwood. So that means we had over 100 radio boxes in Crestwood. Well, in between there, we stopped dispatching for Crestwood. We had a, a little bit of a door, divorce there between the dispatch and, and Crestwood. Um, so a lot of those businesses we never went after, including Kmart and a few other ones that were in Rivercrest Shopping Mall that we will never collect on. Um, at one time, I, if, if my memory, uh, if I can remember, uh, my, recall my memory, uh, we were owed $191,000 at one time. We did actively seek some of the businesses that did owe us. Um, we did send stuff to collection also, so we're down to 113000 Originally from 191 down to 113, that's actually still, still owed to us. A lot of those we will never collect because either A, those businesses are no longer in business, or B, they were part of the Crestwood businesses as well. So some of that revenue is lost. Again, why? Because nobody maintained it for those several years. Um, the next one below that is our unpaid fees in, in 2017 and 2018. So in 2017, we're showing 43 businesses out of the um, well, currently 338, and then um, 2018 we're showing uh, 50 businesses right now. Again, it doesn't mean an uh, MV ticket was issued because, again, they didn't uh, meet the, uh, two times in a row, two payment cycles in a row that they owed us money. So is this 37000 in addition to the 113 above, or is it included? Right. In the last two years, we, uh, we have 37000 that's still owed to us. Um, one of the, the thoughts, and again, going back to uh, shutting down the business, if we, if we shut down the Caltron system, they don't have a fire, uh, working fire alarm in our ordinance. If you don't have a working fire alarm, we shut you down. Um, the board at the time, and, and I know 
uh, most of the or half of you were here, then we talked about that it wouldn't be fair to shut down the business and, and Im impact them that way. So that's why we came up with the municipal violation. Um, the only alternative it would have to be a hearing through the mayor's office to go after those businesses. Uh, some of the businesses that owe us 113,000 previous to 2017 and some of the current ones are the same ones. Um, some of them are actually along the um, Pulaski Road corridor through the TIF district also, and, and I know the mayor is aware of some of those also. Um, some of them are old um, since the beginning. Uh, we just went through a dispute with the, uh, a building that's on Route 83 that was trying to sell. Um, they owed us $3,700? It's um, $4,500. Um, almost six years that nobody collected. Yep, that. almost six years. Um, the owner states that um, they never signed the contract. Um, they never received any notification, but we did produce a copy of the contract with that owner's name on there with the address. <laughs> the bills went there, uh, even with collections. Collections started um, in August 17, and they're sent a collection notice every 30 days with deaf ears from their business. Chief, I never saw any, and I asked for a history of payment, too. I mean, I, we, we clarified there was no payment for the last five. Nobody's even been in that building for the last three. Yeah, correct. Years. But I asked for a history on payments that were made, and nobody ever got those payments. There's no payments made, that's why. At all? No. Since inception of the contract. Well, that's what that's she why claimed it's so high. that she had another company on there. So although she might have signed something and forgot about it. And it might have been for a burglar alarm? My debt company is typically for a burglar alarm, yeah, not for a fire alarm. I, I, I'm, so, yeah, I understand, but here, that's what I'm saying. I mean, in again, just to reiterate what we said at one of our last committee meetings was, I think a lot of us here. That's what happens when you have a change in administrations. When I think we incurred something uh, that. We didn't. I'm just going to say. Oh, I did too. Myself, I didn't create. It, you know, <laughs> Believe me. So, yeah. I, I mean, I've, this is my first year here, so I mean, it's, I didn't create yeah. this, but we're trying to do what we can to clean it up. And um, I don't want to interrupt your, your report, but all I'm saying is, uh, you know, when identifying that business, we have a new business that wants to come to that location, mm -hmm. and now we're because of Cross Points, who's actually the contractor who services this product, also is the one that does all the invoicing. And the checks are supposed to be sent to us, but we're kind of like in the blind here as far as, in, in my opinion. Right. We, we do get a report from Cross Points every three months on who pays and who doesn't. Right. So we they do keep us up on that. It is accurate. But we're, we're physically not managing this program ourselves. They are. They're, yes and no. Um, they're managing to the point where they send out invoices and they collect the money and they send it to us. And they give, excuse me, they give us a report on, on who's paid and who hasn't paid. And if they haven't paid, how long haven't they paid for? I get that. But that's what I'm saying. We're physically really not managing this program. I feel like we're the third-party contractor. And what's even worse on my end, too, is I know what you're saying. You, know, you want to make these businesses more accountable with maybe suspending their license, pulling their license. I had off from due, due process. I have to bring in an attorney and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So here I'm actually going to sit here and be the bad guy and try and chase money that's six years old and so forth. It's completely unfair to everybody involved. Oh, absolutely. And that's why we uh, we ended everybody who owed us at uh, December 31st of 2016 because of that reason. Mm -hmm. 2017, we started fresh. So, and, and we did. And, and we've done much better. And again, the same businesses that owed money are the same ones that owed us before 2016. Well, I know our, our businesses, which we... You know, they come. Businesses come and go. And mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we're, we're blessed to have the amount of business we do in this village. Based on on the sheet you just gave us, with the cost, uh, when you look at two thousand last year's cost, we paid Keltron. Uh, I'm sorry, we paid Cross Points almost eighty eight thousand dollars more last year than what we did this year. Why would that be? Um, I, off the top of my head, I don't know. I don't know why we shouldn't have. Yeah, because that's a. Oh, well, yeah. actually, we're and, and again, like I said, we're overlapping fiscal years. Cross points goes by calendar year. We go by fiscal year. So I think there's some overlapping numbers. Yeah, that are on there. All the way through. Well, I'm sorry. Well, once you take that into account the first time, that rolls all the way through. Yeah, and, and it should. Accordion. It should. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I'm just saying. Last year we paid them 163,000. This year we paid them 75,000 um, dollars. And then it's the opposite as far as return or profit at the end. Last year, 
we supposedly made sixty one thousand, but this year we made one hundred twenty. Right. And, and the year no. and the year we made sixty one, we also had to dish out thirty two thousand dollars to upgrade um, the the system that's in the basement uh, here at the at the police department, as well as what was upstairs in the uh, radio room when we redid the radio room. So all that was an expense of a lot of money. <laughs> Um, and then, I mean, it happens every 10 years we had to do that. The only other thing that we pay out every year is the annual licensing software, which goes from September to September, August to August. I, I know this will end up being a, obviously this is a board decision, the reason we're having a discussion here this evening. And um, as Trustee McLaurin pointed out, we've had this discussion a handful of times, and we need to address <laughs> this now before its renewal date in November. And otherwise it renews it for another three years. Right, and, and here's the other thing to keep in, in mind is there's 338 businesses, all right? 60 days notice is not enough time to say, okay, you have to go get an alarm, another alarm contract or an alarm monitoring contract. Uh, a lot of them just switched over. We have, um, between the last two years, we have roughly 40, 46, seven boxes that aren't paid off yet. Um, we have to find out, does anybody want to stay on there? Uh, and, and, and something we need to talk to the legal department is, are we up for a lawsuit because our ordinance says you have to do this, we're making them do that, all of a sudden, 60 days later, saying, no, no, we're not going to follow that, and, and what are they going to do for the businesses, and what are their impact also? Understood. I, I think the way, and I'm just, I'll be the middleman here is where I'm <laughs> sitting here too, but at the same time, um, depending on what this board wants to do, I agree with the chief. I think one thing we'd probably have to do is have legal draft and ordinance that obviously modifies the original to say that uh, if the board decides that they do not wish to renew the contract, anyone currently owing us money will stay on the service un until they're paid up. Right. And then otherwise, after uh, the renewal date, it's like November 26th, I think. I've got a sheet right here. I believe it's November... It is November 26th of this year. Uh, when that renews, we can actually say to the to the business, to the public, say um, you're no longer compelled to stay with this unless you wish to. Right. That kind of thing then too. You know? The other thing is we're going to have to change a few of our ordinances as far as the alarms because we're going to have to require something, not to say well do whatever you want to do. We're going to have to have. To oh no, I agree with you. I mean, you know, every business has to have an alarm to right. be in business. My, my suggestion is if we are going to discontinue this is work with cross points and maybe do a, a one-year contract so we can have a planned exit strategy and say and instead of saying like 60 days, sorry, yes, you're out of luck. I, I think what we're doing though too, and I can appreciate that, Chief. I mean, again, it's a board decision, but it, I think we're just... It's, well, it's, you're going to have the same scenario next year. Well, we're, we're, creating a net, we're creating a plan to get to that exit. Right now, there is no plan. We shut it off. That's it. There, there is no plan. No, we're offering people a choice uh, to say if, if they want to utilize this program still. That's all. Right. I mean, if, like, like anything else in this world, if it's not broken, if you feel it's, it's, it's a, a fair cost for service, then you're going to stay with it. Right. You know, that kind of thing, yeah, too. And, and the other thing, if it, I mean, however you want to do that within our plan is, um, yeah, whoever owes us owes us money, but if they want to stay with this system and they still owe us money, it's like, you either pay up or get out. I mean, like I said, all that has to be talked about and there has to be a plan that just we're just going to do this and this is it. Well, I, th I think <coughs> if we, again, I, I agree with you. If we have an agreement that says anybody that is owing us money right now, is com they have to stay on the system. They don't have a choice. You know, right. I mean, you, you're owing money. Uh, for others that who are caught up, you know, it's your choice after after November, if you wish to. I mean, right now we've got businesses in town. This has been this is sole sourced, and we've got businesses right here in town that can't solicit uh, like alarm businesses that can't solicit other businesses because of the sole sourced uh, product that we have here then too. Right. I, I mean, we. I think if we went with the one year extension, all we're doing is just. Placating to it. I think we're, we're just extending the same scenario. We're going to have not, the same problem next year. No, I don't think we're, we're, we're doing that. We're just creating a formal plan of, of giving everybody a time that's like, hey, we are ending this program on, on this date. So this is what's going to happen from this date to this date. This is what's going to happen on a dis, on, from this date to the next date. Um, it, it's just a planned way to, you know, uh, abolish the system, if you will. I think it's a good program. I, I, I just feel that because. 
the way, the whole way it's been structured, and we don't have enough we don't have enough uh, oversight in this. We we can't manage right. this in the way we and, should. And a lot of it, I mean, up to um, beginning of this year, was through the nine one one fund. I get that. Yeah, you know. right, which we don't have anymore. And then, right. So now it is that. That was a mechanism. And I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, absolutely right. I'm talking about management here. The only right. thing we managed to do is write the checks. Right. That's it. Mm -hmm. And whether you write the checks out of 911 or you write it out of the corporate fund, all we're doing is writing the checks. Oh, yeah, absolutely. No, I'm not saying we're not. I'm just saying that the, the, the everything through the Caltron went through the 911 fund before, not through the board. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, it. it yeah, it still writes the checks from the village. You're absolutely right. But the money from the Caltron went back into the 911 fund. It did not go into the village corporate account. Now, I thought, Chief, based on previous conversation, that if a business wanted to stay with Caltron, they could contract with Caltron directly themselves. It's not through Caltron. It's through Cross Points. Oh, and I don't Sorry. know if Cross Points has the ability, and I'd have to talk from them, to see if they have the ability to monitor that. I don't believe they do. Because, um, I mean, most of their business is dealing with uh, departments and dispatch centers, not through themselves like other third-party contractors. I don't, I'll have to find that out. So if they are going to stick with a, a Caltron system, they might have to go to another vendor. Now, the other side of the coin is, is Oak Lawn currently monitors our Caltron alarm. And, and one of the, the big things with they're not charging us to do that, which is great because that would even cut down on our profits even more if you want to look at it that way. But there are only other ones that they monitor is through Tyco. Tyco is another third-party con uh, contractor. There's many of them that were out there. So, again, we have to have that in place also to what are we going to do. We have to spell that out. What are these businesses going to have to do for the fire alarm? Where do they have to go? All right, because with the radio alarms, we don't respond on trouble alarms. So whatever system they go to, they need to be able to differentiate between a trouble alarm and a full fire alarm. Caltron does that. Not all of them do that, especially if they're done by a third-party uh, company somewhere at dispatch center outside the state of Illinois, and, and that's one of our issues that we've had in the past is, is a delay of alarm. So like I said, there's a lot to think about and in and, and my personal opinion, 60 days is not enough to do that in. It's just too short a notice for businesses. And right now we have, in the last several months, how many boxes have we purchased that we're on the hook for? Well, we put a limit on the amount of boxes to buy in this past year. And also, we've already been talking about this for two months, so we've already kicked the can down this far. Right. And now you're saying that another two months isn't enough as well. Not to tell the business, to, sorry, we're not doing this no more. We have to have, we need to have some type of formal plan to exit out of here. I tend to agree with the mayor, though. Uh, if we're sitting here a year from now, we're going to be doing the same, well, we have won't the same be. speech. So you're going to have the same conversation with us no, as no. we're having with you right now. My, my suggestion is, is sitting down with a, a committee of trustees and myself and the mayor and formulating a, a formal exit strategy And you don't here. think we can do that in 60 days? No. We have companies that have a hard time switching um, alarm uh, companies now in, in the 60 days as it is. Now, did you say, let me get see if I got this straight. Uh, we have an ordinance that says if they're going to, they cannot go through a, uh, they can't, no, they, that they can't. Uh, get their own alarm. <laughs> right now, our ordinance says that if, if, if you're a new business, you have to go to the Caltron system. If you're an existing business that has a, a alarm contract, when your alarm contract expires, you cannot auto-renew. You have to go to the Caltron system. So we as a village are forcing people to have Caltron only. Correct. Yet we have 500 businesses. Uh, roughly 850. Not every, not every business has a fire alarm. Depends on the age of the business. And, and what their business is. Not everybody's required to have a fire alarm system. So we're talking significantly less than half the businesses in town have a Caltron system. Yeah, businesses in general. Some of them, and, and keep in mind, some of them have them for the whole bid building. So if you have a strip mall with five or six businesses in there, that's one building that has that, and we have quite a few of those. Some of the Caltrons are tied to businesses only. Some of them are tied to buildings. 
Uh, we also have apartment buildings that have Caltron. We have condo buildings that have the Caltron. So there's a wide variety of, of users for the Caltron system. And, the, and going back to what you said, Trustee Zelensky, is um, the folks that are the folks that are required to have a, a fire alarm system, basically everybody's got Caltron right now, period. So like the chief says, you know, come the end of November, if we decide to discontinue the service, this market can be actually go wide open, you know, for obviously... Um, but those businesses have the Caltron now. It's being right. monitored by Oak Lawn now. So just because we discontinue the operation of the alarm doesn't mean that that system stops working. <coughs> That's what it's I was in saying. Place, right. It's operational. We're not turning it off of anybody. In fact, if it ran free for that period of time in order for them to facilitate a change, you know, who would know and who would care? But that's something that Oak Lawn's going to have to work out with Crosspoints, not us. But I, that's a whole different conversation. The hard part is, is that this discussion has been more than two months, it's been more than two years. We've been talking about the Caltron system forever, Caltron system forever, and, and to date we're still unable to get solid numbers. Mm -hmm. You know, the presentation that we have here shows three years at one area, five years at another, two in another. Um, it, it shows here revenue amounts for 2019. That, that's what I'm saying. I, it's part of it because this year is now considered fiscal year 19. And, and these are the ones that we got, got from finance. Okay. I mean, I, I see the shows from 8, 824. Right. But when we talk about the dollar amounts, they're inconsistent. Right. And when I take a look at this as prepared or what you had given us for the, uh, the budget preparation, these numbers aren't consistent between one right. another for previous years. Right. And, and that's why I said if, if we're going to exit this, at least let's set up a timetable with specific things to be done by those times or those dates. That's all I'm asking. We, we've never had a formalized plan. We've, we've talked about this. It goes away for a couple months. We, we talk about it. It goes away for a couple months. We've never had a timetable set up for anything. We never had a formal plan. Okay, we're doing this and we're not doing this. If we're not going to do this anymore, let's have a specific time so we can change our ordinance, advise all the businesses what their choices are, talk to cross points to see what their capabilities are. If they want to maintain that with them, that's fine or if Oglawan's going to monitor it, all that still has to be in the conversation. Well, they did That's reply. That's the only thing I'm asking. <clears throat> they did reply to us. They weren't interested in doing a quarterly agreement of any type, so. No, that was for the, that's for the annual software. That wasn't for the contract. Okay. Two totally different things. Well, okay. so, so they're not even willing to work with us. No, that's all they, that's all they said is, is um, they don't do the software for quarterly amounts. I said, we haven't had no meetings with them. My only meeting is talking to the owner of Cross Points. He's not Keltron. He's only representative of Keltron. But he's the one who's invoicing us. He's the one that we're paying. He's the one who's doing the invoicing. Correct. He's the one that knows what it is. The presentation that we have here doesn't show the amount invoiced. It only shows the revenues received. So we have no idea what these numbers truly are. These okay. are the people who are working for us. We're the ones who are writing on the checks, and yet we don't have any numbers. All the top information is what we get from finance. Can, can I interrupt? Sure. Just a second, and I don't know if this is relevant because I'm not. The conversation isn't necessarily going um, to how much is brought in, how much is going back out. But I will say that um, finance doesn't have all the numbers. We can look at invoices, but what we don't know is the amount of hours and the associated employee benefits that go along with monitoring it on the village side. So we've never been able to put together a really good anal financial analysis because we're missing data. That's what, um, we, that's we don't know how much fire department. We, we're not at that location. We're here. That's, we, we just right. kind of said that in a different yeah. ways. Is uh, mm -hmm. We're really not talking about numbers. We're talking about management. And, and I don't know if that's relevant or not. I mean, I think the conversation is going to what Chief just said uh, about setting up a plan. That, that's not part of the finance stuff, but as we mentioned finance, I just have to put that out there, right. that we don't have, uh, finance itself doesn't have all the information because there's labor hours, and we have no clue, at least I, I'll state, I have no clue how much hours are put internally towards this, and who's those, <coughs> out, uh, who's 
is putting right. those hours. Right now, at the bottom of the, the table that I have you time spent, it shows two of my, one of my lieutenants, one of my firefighters. Those are administrative costs for the Fire Prevention Bureau, not Keltron solely. It's only a portion of what they have. Since we've hired a part-time secretary, that's part of her responsibilities, and she has it on there roughly five hours a month is what she spends on Keltron. That's well, it. The only other expense is if we have to write an MV ticket, uh, one of my inspectors writes the MV ticket, that's it. It's the only expense that we have right now on Caltron. There's no other labor cost to that. You said your secretary only spends five hours towards the Caltron? A month with Caltron. Isn't, wasn't Caltron the main reason why? No, that was only a portion. Building inspections. Yeah, a lot of it is the building of the business and inspections, uh, maintaining um, between the, fire the two fire prevention officers and the building inspect or the fire inspectors. There was a lot of other jobs that was part of it. Keltron was just a very small amount of it, and still is. So, I feel like we've covered this enough times. I think we're all pretty. Everyone's pretty well versed for a lot of this, then too. But would it be the would it be the will of the board here? Do we, if we want to, consider not? Um, let's put it this way: if we're going to discontinue service. As the chief said, we got at least have a, a, a not only an ordinance, but we have to have an exit plan on what we're going to do, and it can be an aggressive one, you know, to, mm -hmm. to actually look through this. But um, if that's the case, obviously I'm I'm the full time person here, along with you know with the fire committee, we can work on this together as far as and with the chief, with your office certainly. Uh, I think we need tables. I think we need to look at this and see if we can if we can give an answer because according to the contract. Um, is it the board's desire to continue with the program or not? If they want to continue, then it's not a big deal. Well, I said, well, why don't we just take a poll on that top topic then, Trustee Zielinski? Do you prefer to continue or discontinue? <laughs> I'd like to discontinue. Trustee Delzell, continue or discontinue? Discontinue. Trustee <laughs> McGrail, continue or discontinue? Discontinue. Trustee Murphy, continue or discontinue? I, I agree to discontinue. This is a train wreck. Finan from the fi on financial from standpoint. Your opinion for the record, discontinue as well. Mm -hmm. So, so I think the intent, the first step that we need to do then is we can go ahead and notify cross points. I mean, now go ahead and send them formal notification that it is our intention to not renew this contract for another three-year period. All right. And meanwhile, and I think get that's a the key, not for another three-year period, and inquire if <clears> they. <throat> Well, if we need to go until January 1st in order to extension? have the exit plan, but we to that point, that. you've got to set some very firm timelines. Find lines. out what they're willing to to do as far as a timetable go, and then base the exit strategy off of that. That inquire with that's legal, what my find out what the ramifications are. Any light. I right. I, I think yeah. if you pull the plug on all of this, you, you're, it's going to be chaos. Yeah. For sure. I, I, I think we'll leave the businesses and, and high and dry. That would be that would be wrong. Right. 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 Yeah. But, yeah. We have to find out, and to the chief's point, sure. the strategy is appropriate. And that's, that's one point. thing we've never talked about, right. having a timetable, time frame to do that. Would you be able to start a timetable because you have more knowledge in this area as we're going through this yeah, process? Yeah, I think part of what we need to do from cross points is find out how much time they would want to work with us. And it, it, like Trustee Murphy said, that would give us our basis. And, and this way we can see what, what we have to revise in our, our ordinance. Um, see if, if Cross Points has the ability to monitor or work with Oak Lawn. I mean, there's a lot of things we have to look at, but yeah, we can start that ball rolling right away. And and, and for the next committee meeting, I'll give you more information from what I hear, so it'd, it'd be easier to work out that timetable. Okay. All right. Per, per contract, just so everyone's aware with how this is written, it says uh, General Provisions Section Four. Uh, a, either party may terminate this agreement by providing 30 days written notice to the other. Uh, B, this agreement shall be for an initial term of three years commencing on the date of acceptance, which was back in November 26, 2006. And um, of uh, head-end equipment, I'm sorry, this agreement commencing on the date of acceptance of 
head-end equipment installation at LSIP. This agreement shall automatically renew for a successive three-year terms unless either party notifies the other in writing not less than 30 days prior to the expiration of any term. Crosspoint Sales acknowledges that all equipment associated with the Keltron system is the property of LSIP. Cross points shall maintain all necessary records and reports per pertaining to Caltron and the related services rendered under the provisions of this agreement. And then finally, this agreement shall be interpreted and construed in accordance with the laws of the state of Illinois. So anyway, it's a 30-day notice if should they not agree to extend. All right. That's where and, we're at with And this. that's the other thing, November too. 6th. November 26th, 2018. And, and that's the other October thing we have to look at is what do we do with the boxes if they don't want them? I mean, like I said, there's a lot of things to look at. It's not just, yeah. okay, we're just going to turn off and that's it. There's a lot of working pieces and Understood. a lot of time. No, I, get, I get it, Chief. We're so going to have to get like on this right yeah, away. Like though, I too. said, if we are going to discontinue it, I, I, I'm not going to continue fighting a losing battle, but I want to at least do right by the businesses and have a, a proper exit strategy for it. Definitely. That. That's you the biggest thing I'm looking for. You know, your, your department's doing a great job. No one's no one's questioning, you know, what you guys are doing. I think we brought it, we were brought into a system here that is just taking our time, and now we're pl and now we're playing um, right. catch up. Catch up, and it's something that's almost impossible to do. And right. it was it was reflective just recently, like you said, where we have a business in town on Route 83 that's waiting for a new business to come into it. Now we get held up over a municipal violation over something that didn't even really exist to begin with and stuff. Then too, so this is all just bad paper, right. and we want to make it right. We want to manage this, this this village as it should be. And certainly put your professional hours into it being a fire department and not you know, a collection service and right. stuff. And, and too. you know, one of the other the problems we, we ran into with the contract is, and I said this before, if business A signs the contract, business A moves out, business B moves in, there was nothing ever right. signed with them. So, and like I said, I mean, I inherited it too. So you think it's a train wreck now. Try six years ago when they took this over, like. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't know I was getting myself into with that. So I say none of us are really equipped to deal with that. No, I think and we should turn it over to the professionals who actually can cut off the service per right. day. Right. Yeah, and absolutely. I agree with all of you. Like I said, I'm kind of stingy for two reasons: is I'm looking out to protect our firemen mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. because again, it's it's an instantaneous alarm compared to other ones that are out there that aren't so much. So, well, they. I mean, I think we got a fair shake out of it. We got, uh, you know, almost 12 years out of it. It's a, it's, it's a good system, but, yeah, I agree with you. Okay. So, trustees, thank you very much, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. At least we have some direction on this then, too. Thank you, Chief. Yep. We'll and I'll, work right with, I'll get those answers, and I'll work with the mayor and the fire committee with the rest of it. Thank All you. right. Thank, thank you. you. Moving along, then, the police committee, Trustee McGrill. Um, I have for discussion a request for approval to promote one patrol officer to the position of sergeant Sorry. to replace the retired uh, Sergeant Durkin per contract. Promotion scheduled to take place on September 24th, 2018. I don't know if Chief Miller wants to add anything to that. Uh, no, I'm good. <laughs> you're the only one. You're the, you're the only one that is. Let's put it that way. Yeah. I don't really. think you got 30 seconds. <laughs> Can't believe we. Were, you're right. good. Hey, uh, so I apologize also. We were interrupted at the beginning of the meeting. You and I had a discussion um, over the weekend. Unfortunately, one of the recruits that we swore in la last week did not pass the power test for because your, your recruit started the academy today. So only two out of three people went to the academy, right? Correct. Okay. Um, so we're back uh, looking at the list of next academies until January now. So. so I wanted to, obviously we can quickly do this in a committee scenario here then too, but I really, you know, right now you're down three three policemen right now. But the Sergeant Durkin just left and two other, one fellow's leaving the end of the week and another guy already left, right? Correct. Okay. So we're down three right now. Do you think it's in the best interest to look at any kind of lateral hires right now? Because otherwise you can't get anybody in that school until January. And we're not getting those recruits back till January. And even then, they're with a field training officer. It'll you're be asking, till you're May. You're asking me if I want policemen sooner than January? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to support you in that effort. Uh, do you do you do you have any kind of lateral list, or you have anything like that? Change of fire police officer. Yeah, they'd have to post. There's a um, bunch of statutory requirements that go along with that as well, and it's going to require loosening up some of the purse strings over here. 
to work. And, uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> That's you, Kat. <laughs> it's, it's something we could look at and discuss later. Yeah, I just want to make sure, Chief, that, you know, obviously, I guess my concern is your guys are all, all the policemen are working 12 hour shifts, and do we have the personnel to cover? Uh, are you covered? We're fine for right sure. now. All right. Just want to be sure. I mean, I, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't ask. You know, so um, I want to be, be sure and that we're not killing it with the overtime and all that kind of thing then, too, to cover shifts. No, our overtime is under control. So. Okay. All right. Um, that's it for police? Yes. Things you say when the fire department's away. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's just, I, you know, my job is to support, and, and certainly I'm, I'm here to support everybody. Public Works, what do you need, Mike? Hey, Mike, do you want to tell everybody about your fancy new truck in the garage? No, that kind of thing, you know? Yeah, you know, that kind of thing. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Even Mike said Friday we were down in the Public Work garage, and Mike's like, must be Christmas here. we got two brand-new trucks in the garage mm -hmm. and stuff. Never had that happen before and stuff then, too, you know? What was a demo? I mean, we have a great deal on the one truck and stuff then, too. But we still have a um, we still have a, a um, whatever a front end loader backhoe rather dripping hydraulic fluid all over the garage and stuff. So yeah, you know, a couple more weeks. Thank you very much. Anyway, moving along here then, Public Works and Boat Launch Committee. Uh, it would be either Trustee McGreal or Trustee Murphy. Trustee Murphy. Yeah. Uh, we have presentation of the August 2018 monthly activity report. Uh, number two, a request for approval to have Strata Construction perform sidewalk removal replacement within various areas of the village. The Village of Elsa participated in a joint bid with the South Suburban Mayors and Managers Association for sidewalk removal and replacement. Strata Construction was awarded the contract with the lowest bid. Approximately 10,700 square feet of concrete or 430 sidewalk squares will be replaced. And number three, we have a request to go out to bid for one green chipper F300 Pro remote controlled slope mower. I'd like to have one of those myself. <laughs> oh, that's, what that is, that's a green climber. And I, I spoke with uh, Public Works about this. What that is, this is the new technology now too. We, and this is in the budget. This is a remote controlled um, lawnmower. The problem we found is that some of the areas that we cut grass on the sides of like hills, like along Cicero Avenue and Pulaski, they become unsafe for even our public work guys, even with the articulating um, lawnmowers, that they're, they're soft spots and they're in, in fear of possibly tipping the thing over at some point. Yeah. Yeah, it's the ruts where it tips over. It's become, to put a man behind there, whereas I've seen the demonstration when the state came, or that vendor came out and showed, and actually the state is using these now too, with the remote controlled lawnmowers, and they cut the lawn and stuff. I mean, before you know it, people, you know some hotshot's going to buy one for his house at some point, you know. But That, um, that, would, that would be me. <laughs> <laughs> That's I got a 24-year-old, and I said so we need the exercise. We still got the push mower in our house and stuff, you know. But um, one other one other benefit that I really think might be, I feel, is going to be essential. I fight with the state all the time over the appearance of Cicero Avenue and whatnot of our of our um, medians. We are considering utilizing this on the medians and cutting the grass ourselves, you know, because we want. To yes. Oh. Right. But I want. No, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, but I'm telling you, that would be great to do. Is it more capable if we vote yes to buy it? <laughs> that was my, that's where we were going with that. Boy, you read between the lines real well. You know, so. Well, we're gonna, that's what we need to talk about. That's not in stone, but I'm, I'm really concerned with the image of our community, and I don't believe the state is doing their end on IDOT's side to, to cut the grass in a timely fashion. I have fought with them. Can we the state back if we no, it I, you know, No, that would be, that'd be a wonderful thing. In line. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, had a, I had a major, yeah, I, I don't even want to go there on camera. You know, it's just one of these kind of things. Because, folks, these are always YouTube, too, these, all these meetings here. So, anyway, um, thank you, Trustee, for your report. Uh, building Committee, Trustee Zielinski? No report tonight, Mayor. 
Trustee, I, something came up just a few hours ago right before the meeting, and it was just a suggestion, and I thought it was a good one. That while we do request approval of neighborhoods, like when you're having a band, let's say, or even a DJ at a, um, like a block party, we always ask for uh, like an approval like from your neighbors to have so done. I guess, um, you know, obviously we all have things to do on the weekends, but apparently there's been a few situations recently where people are having bands at their house for like a birthday party or something, and they're driving their neighbors nuts, and they're not compelled to do the same thing, or haven't done this. Let's put it this way. They haven't done the same procedure. What I was going to ask, if you would look at your committee, talk to your committee members, I would, you know, aside from block parties, uh, let's maybe talk with police here or left, but um, let's find out what's required. And if you do need permission of your neighbors, let's let's mandate that. And we'll put it in writing. property as well as the front end so Howie do you want to yeah, make any well, points let's see what I'd like to say is that uh, even the figure I'm sure you have the 260 could you talk into the microphone, speak up the microphone. Yeah. I'd like to say even at the figure of 260 there's going to be even more expenses that are even not even in here and that's why I'm asking for the more money uh, one of the things I know I'm going to need lighting in the back I'm going to have to put up a fence because I have a building there and, and I've been through this before where when I put the roof on, I had an estimate of 103, and I got, I think, 83. And then when it was done, it became up to 133. And I, I pay, you know, I, so I know I've been this, through this before, and I'm going through this now again. I know there's going to be a lot more expenses than they're showing here. I, th I think what's important here, I, and certainly we all appreciate, yeah. uh, Mr. 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 Shinowski owns the strip mall where Nancy's Pizza is at in the, in the um, currency exchange at 115th and Pulaski. That's the property we're talking about here. And we've seen this in a lot of locations where you've got limited parking because you've got so many storefronts there. And now, how big is the, the venue for the new restaurant for Rockies? Who's considering your place right now? How big is that storefront that they're going to take? About 2,400 square feet. 2,400. Okay. And much like a lot of restaurants that we go to, um, there's not enough parking in front. I was at Capri over the, over the weekend over on Harlem Avenue, and they've got a lot of parking behind them they were able to utilize and so forth. So this is kind of the same situation. Obviously, you own the property behind, but I think... I'm not going to speak for the board because obviously there's a lot of votes in front of me before it gets here, but I think what's important to remember, too, what I think is important here is that while we can appreciate you wanting to accommodate this new business, and we want to see this new business come in, too, because I hear they have excellent food. They've got a restaurant in Elmhurst right now, and they want to come they're, to they're the south side. There's going to be a lot of these, which is good because there's going to be more advertising for the whole area, a lot of areas, right. and that'll bring it, each one will be, you know. But, but how, yeah, I, th I think what concerns me the most seriously is that if we establish more parking behind your building, is routing the traffic through a residential alley afterward, how are you going to get them out? Well, we're, we've, um, we've, we've made accepted a plan. We've created, the I, plan I already is meant to an go in and out for I paid an engineer oh. about $11,000. I will have paid him at this. You can come in and off of 115th place. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and, uh, yeah, And place. he made plans ready. I mean, the engineer made the plans to show how it's going to look. Okay. And then we're not, you, I had asked uh, Roger if we could use the alley. He asked if that was possible. They said no, so we worked around that. Okay. But we just come back off the street. Because you're going to meet you're going to meet Wednesday night with planning and zoning, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Correct. Okay. So while we're considering what we want to do on our end, trustees, how he's you're going to be meeting with our plan and zoning commission to get their approval on this plan as well. Correct. Okay. The other thing too is when I say you know I want to go in for around two hundred thousand, in this two hundred sixty-two thousand doesn't even include this engineer that I'm giving like twelve thousand dollars to. I mean, by the time I'm done, it's going to be, I'm sure, in excess of a three hundred thousand dollar deal. Okay. Because, like I say, I've been through this where I know you just whatever comes up, I want to make it right, as long as we're doing it. Well, Trustee Murphy, I know you're you're new with our board, but being economic development com uh, committee. I think this is obviously where you're going to have to um, speak to the, this as well, too. I know we've got these guys, that, uh, and we've got the Mannheim group 
that brings the work into us, but you know we're going to have to talk about the financing aspect of that because Kent, how much? I mean, do we have anything appropriate at that strip mall right now for future financing? For um, in, we're talking about this. I'm sorry. Just so everyone knows, the light's back on. Oh. We believe it's now recording again. Okay. Um, we're talking that one because uh, I was I had to step out to to work okay. on that. Uh, with Brian, we're talking about the the mall, Mr. Um, Schnauski, yeah. one 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 five one five, yeah, yeah, one fifteen fifteen. Um, that's the one on the east side of the yes. street, just south of. Okay, um, yeah, there is some on there. Uh, it wasn't the dollar amount that's not being discussed, but there is some room in the budget if that's how, um, because not everything could be predicted right at the beginning. I understand. Um, what did we originally uh, somewhat appropriate for that? Um, I Eight. talked with. It, it was eighty thousand dollars, and then there's another two hundred thousand dollars in the TIF budget that's yeah. uh, for un, undisclosed projects. Right. So there, there was when you guys did the budget, you put um, a certain amount in there for things that were unforeseen. So um, some of that money can be applied to it, and that's the two hundred that he's referring to. But right. that's can I just also say that the restaurant on the corner when he gets busy. They also park in my lot. You know, I really don't want to make big issues. You know, people got to have their businesses, and I appreciate that. Right. No, so I, this would help. I'm hoping my restaurant utilizes the whole lot, but it could be available for. Well, you know, then it, we need to have this discussion real quick too, because some of those monies that we talked about, and I was one of the first ones to say it too, is we still have properties down the street where we just leveled that car wash. And there's other properties over there too that we're, we we don't want to just give away all of our eggs uh, oh, per se, that. you know, and leave yeah. ourselves short. So because we do, we are looking for development there. We put a lot of interest into that as well, as well as we're interested in trying to support your interest too, Mr. Mm -hmm. Shinowski. So I mean, this is where you know if, if we've appropriated eighty thousand dollars. I know it's nowhere near what you're kind of looking for, but we. Obviously, we've looked at this a few times as a board. We didn't just pull that number out of the sky to say this is the direction we were going with that, though, too. Okay. Can I interrupt, Mayor? When we, uh, when we did the budget, um, I worked with uh, both Roger and Chris, and we did the best guesses of where we thought in the next few years, it's not just this year, but in future years, which projects might hit at which time and how much and what they would be asking for. Um, some of those projects don't hit, um, so it's not just the 200000 best possible. Other um, projects aren't expending those monies because they were best guesses. Some of them, uh, such as his, may be more. It's, uh, I'm not suggesting one way or the other whether or not you should approve for a request for more. I'm just saying there's a little more flexibility than shows up there. And those are... Um, it, those are our best guesses within a line item. You've actually just appropriated the line item. Now, some of the line item is already bound by existing RDA, so it's not a completely free, you can spend it any way you want. Some of it has been um, assigned based on previous redevelopment agreements. The other thing that's happened since the budget is the water um, project that's happening is 75% paid for by the water fund, uh, by the TIF fund, I'm sorry, and only 25 by the water fund, that did come in better than budget. So the TIF funds, uh, the TIF fund is going to be in better shape um, than we had originally, by the end of this fiscal year, either way, um, on this, a little bit better than we had originally anticipated due to the good bids that we got on that water project. All right. Side information. I'm I not it. saying one way or the other on any project, but yeah, I don't want to cut off the plan zoning commission either. I'm just saying this is two parts of what you're doing. Yeah. It's one getting the endorsement of the plan zoning commission to actually do that parking lot that you want to do, mm -hmm. and two would I would certainly be what you're asking us to do is support some of the financing. You know, and whereas again, for the record, you know, when you, when you talk about TIF financing, is um, tax increment financing. You know, we essentially Look at where our return on investment is too between your property tax and any kind of sales tax revenues um, that come back to the village, and sometimes you know that could be ten years or so to get the, to recoup our monies. 
just ballpark. I don't know what it's going to be and you know, what, what we're looking at right now. Roger, what is it going to be? I could probably ask you that. What do you, what do you estimate in our return on that? Well, our return is going to be about $40,000 in new revenue every year. And, you know, the likelihood of sustaining those other businesses there that are generating revenues, most, most of which are coming from Nancy's Pizza, because they're the other restaurant operator, mm -hmm. and maybe the popcorn stand, but okay. you know, I don't think the gross at the popcorn stand or the beauty salon is that great. Right. A lot of it is predicated on the, the gaming. Right. Mm -hmm. That is at some point in time, the gaming 000. can become yeah. somewhat saturated, and the estimate here was 500000 annually. Yeah, and... Uh, you know, she, when, she when I talked to, to the me. mayor about okay. this, you know, they, the mayor said that the average right now of all the gaming licenses is about twenty thousand dollars per license. But well, yeah, no. this one's projected at twenty-four. Twenty-four, right? But, you know, and I, would, I will say, I, I was actually looking at this with Trustee Murphy uh, before the meeting this evening, and we were just doing a comparative uh, again. And let's just say we took one local business, a, a restaurant in town, that's got gaming right now, and actually. The return to the village was what was it, seventy five hundred? Yes. You know, then so call it eight, maybe somewhere between seventy five hundred, eight eighty five hundred dollars is really the return on that to us on that particular venue, and it was a comparable styled restaurant of what Rockies is going to be. So, um, I don't want we can't. Uh, it, they're all they're asking for is a beer and wine license. I understand they have great food, but we don't want to put a lot of stock into as the trustee just said, just gaming. You know, I mean, obviously you have an overall strip mall there, so. Can I just ask this, though, if, because uh, I know maybe at another time, what the main thing for me is to see that parking. Yeah. Okay, so if I could do the parking now or, I don't know, in, in the front later, you know, then I could swing it with, with what's allowable. The parking figure came in at 100 162,000. So again, even with the 80 that we've kind of somewhat earmarked, we're half. We're, you know, we're in a 50-50 with you on that. But if you could come, if up the board something. decides to go with that, yeah, then, I know. Yeah, but yeah. I'm just saying, the main thing is the parking. If, the, if I get the parking, then I could have this tenant. Mm -hmm. okay. And I get it. The, the, yeah. the parking's the business is predicated on the parking. Right. Mm -hmm. So, right. All right. So, you know, obviously, trustee, you'll have to bring it back to the board. You know, for consideration, we've had a presentation that tonight for that, and then certainly we'll wait to see what the Planning and Zoning Commission recommend. If they're going to give us a recommendation for we give final the board will give final approval, I should say, on that and stuff then too. Just so you know, there is an engineer papers on it that I submitted. So okay, you know, you know the other thing that Howie has furnished us, and I'll put all of this stuff into the folder and the village's shared drive if you want to look at the information, but. When he showed me his income and expense statement for the property, um, he is uh, making a very marginal return on the property. And so whatever the village puts into it for a grant really benefits uh, more the neighborhood um, because, um, you know, he really can't sustain uh, a really high investment in that property. And I think we've already demonstrated that we want to work with him because we want 80%. Right. And you okay. have already. I got to thank you very much for what you did already. You should, because if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be able to have a tenant like this. No, and and there's things around you too, Mr. Schnowski, that you know, we're really looking forward to some positive things. Like we just said, like across the street at Official Cuts, he's putting up a brand new facade that's going to look nothing like it does now, and that's going to be a barber college. And you know, you've got a lot of other things going on over there, so you're going to have some local local entities that are going to support your business, like your strip mall, I should say too. So. All right. Each will feed off the other. I mean, if it looks good, then, you know, Absolutely. when you get a tenant like this, it could help the other tenants in, in the shopping center. Exactly. Well, yeah. good luck, and then we'll, we'll talk later after after we get yeah, the we're recommendation for some from the direction. Them. Maybe at next uh, you know, Monday's uh, board meeting, you can give us some direction about how much you feel comfortable allowing us to fund through the RDA, and then we'll negotiate. I guess the, the difficulty is, is that, as the finance director has indicated, is a lot of these numbers have changed. And, and we've got a lot of unknowns going forward. We've got a car wash that we've demolished. We've got another piece of property that we've yet to sit there and demolish that in order to make it ready. And then what happens when a business comes forth and says, I'd like to locate on there, what are you going to do for me? And if we've got nothing left in the piggy bank, maybe we can't even get rid of the property that we've got significant funds invested in. 
Well, we've, we've sat down and forecast those uh, needs in the, the future, you know, working with Kent, and there will be resources to be able to address those 2019 budget or the 2020 budget as the case may be. Right, but so. as the finance director has indicated, is a lot of these numbers that we're talking about today have already changed. So those things that we talked about in the budget, which quite frankly, I don't recall all the numbers. Right. So it, it just, for us to, me personally, for me to sit there and grab all this information and think, okay, great. I mean, the premise behind it, what I can see from the, the drawing, that looks great. But you need to know what the resources that we have available so that we don't sit there and throw all the eggs in one basket here and not that it's going to be, you know, I think it'll be a fine looking basket. Yeah, right. But at what cost to the rest of the development? Right. Well, like I say, my main concern is to make it so they're able to get in there and uh, maybe in steps I could get it all done. Right. Okay. You know, it's, um, it's easier in steps to be honest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No problem. And as the trustee said, we can revisit this next Monday night too. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. For I appreciate you going forth. Yeah. Okay. Uh, trustee, you had one more on, on your agenda there. Number three. Uh, number <laughs> and number three, um, the economic enhancement committee will be selling nine-inch potted mums for ten dollars each, or three for twenty-five. Order forms will be available on the village website or Facebook at the Village Hall, at the Elsip Marionette Public Library, and at the Elsip Park District. And I would just like to say for the record, I have made the first purchase. <laughs> you bought mums? I bought mums. Now, you can buy mums for your mum if you were in England, or your grandmum, or your mummy. Because Halloween is coming up, everyone. So. Uh, Becky, this is for you. It is a check made out, and we're good to go. So, uh, moving on. That's all I have. By the way, to, just quickly, uh, just a one sentence. So, we we have re received quite a few checks after the newsletter toward the beautification of the village as well. And we thank everyone that that have donated monies to our village uh, for the beautification of our community. I think that's a wonderful thing. A lot of folks are doing so. Um, moving along, Plan and Zoning Committee, Trustee Zielinski. Yes, so we have a discussion regarding zoning to allow Tattoo Studio that was proposed by a resident in the business district. And again, we need to actually discuss this because he's waiting on an answer and we need to find out if we are going to, as a board, it's got nothing really to do with planning and zoning, but if we are going to allow, as a board, to mirror the state uh, ordinance or uh, the legislation that they have for a tattoo parlor mm -hmm. or are we going to go out and change what we have I mean we, I, we have to decide what we're going to do with that I, I think what I what I was saying to you Friday I, I put this on your agenda just so we could wrap up this conversation I brought this up two weeks ago we had a resident that came in that wants to open a tattoo studio he had a location picked out over near and one of the strip business malls there at uh, 127 just west of Cicero and um, we didn't it didn't pick up a lot of traction at the time I just wanted to actually bring the premise up then what happened was under it, we don't necessarily have an ordinance with this but we do have a zoning um, stipulation that says a tattoo studio requires a um, physician on site uh, to oversee any kind of piercings and so forth then too I, and I thought legal was going to review that um, he hadn't got back to me, but I can certainly get back with him on that then, too. And as, as I said, Trustee Zielinski, we can certainly defer to ordinance legislation to actually put that in a form of an ordinance. I think most importantly is, um, well, I, I partially answered my own question. Uh, we can have legal gives, but he's looking for direction, too. Do we even want to pursue this? I guess that's the main question. What's, what's, what's the problem with it as long as, yeah. Yeah. Right. as, long as it complies with the... Uh, Long. All right. Well, I appreciate the positive uh, response. What I'll do is uh, I'll because we didn't really get much of a response when I first brought this up two weeks oh, ago. Uh, so, from what I understand, our ordinances are more strict than the state's. Right. They are. So, are we willing to bring it down to the state standard so he can? That's the question. That's business. why I put. That's why I put this on here. Well, 
should we take a consensus of that well, or what specifically though is the what is the existing ordinance and what does it currently state it's I'm asking for a, a, a licensed physician to be on premise which is ridiculous I think yeah, how, how are you how are you to be profitable but if you have a licensed position that so wow. That's that's the and I don't have my I don't have my uh, in front of me. But when I listen to the other communities around us that have tattoos, um, many do. In Crestwood, I think they got four or five. You know, and Oak, I don't think Oak Lawn had any. Uh, Chicago Ridge had three or four. You know, and, and so forth. But I I can just tell you, I, I highly doubt they have a licensed physician on staff. As as Trustee Murphy said, that'd be an awful expensive um, practice to have for a sporadic. Um, business for sporadic sales. So, as as you just said, and, and this is why I said uh, starting this kind of quick conversation was, if we want to adopt the Illinois uh, Department of Health's ordinance, I'll certainly give that to everybody. And if everybody's in, a, we can bring that to the board for an approval if we want to accept that, and adopt the Illinois policy as opposed to right now we have it in zoning form, not in ordinance form. That's why I said this was a plan. Well, I'm all for changing it. Okay. Uh, straw poll. I see. Yes. Okay. Trustee so, McGrill. I would just like to review the ordinance and the zoning. No problem. That's what I'm saying. I'll get everybody a copy of that. Uh, you just said you were in favor. Of I was candidate. in favor. Okay. And then uh, tr Trustee McLaughlin. I'm undecided. Okay. But I'll get a copy of that, and maybe we bring it back to the board uh, next week. Our uh, Trustee Kankar. Can, I'm, I'm sorry. Attorney Kankar can get on that right away and stuff. Until we'll, I'll take a look at that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, we'll also, finish up here then. Special committee reports, village properties. Trustee McLaughlin. No report at this time, Mayor. No, that's right. And the insurance committee, Trustee McGrail. No report. Ordinance of legislation, Trustee Murphy. Uh, no report. IT, Trustee Dalzell. Uh, I'll defer some of my time to Trustee Zelensky so he can finish his train of thought. All right. Well, I was just going to say, that, uh, going back to planning and zoning, there was uh, three cases that are going to be heard this Wednesday, unless you have that fourth one that you were going to add to it. Um, I forgot. What, what was it? I only have the case numbers here. I, I don't have what they were all for, but I thought you were going to add a, a fourth oh, one. Oh, no. It was just a question about what we brought up, uh, Brazil, uh, okay. we, we just mentioned here. And that's all I have. Yes. Today. I got nothing. All right. Um, Human Resource, Trustee McGrill. No report. All right. Health and Pollution, Trustee Murphy. Um, number one, we have uh, September is National Suicide Prevention Month. If you or someone you know needs emergency assistance, contact the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-273-8255 or visit www.nami.org slash find hyphen support for more help. Number two, I have a presentation of the August 2018 activity report. And uh, just on a side note, the circus is in town, uh, where this starts tomorrow, uh, with uh, sponsored by the Elsa Park, Park District. Uh, it is running Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, from 5 p.m. to 7.30 both days. This is free to ALSAP residents. And um, along with that pertaining to health, uh, Linda the, from the health department will be there to check uh, temperatures and make sure that uh, safe food is being served and all good on that. Also, I also have another uh, bit of information that um, uh, the village and the south side suburban mayor's manager managers uh, will be offering discount tickets to Great America, Great America, Six Flags Fright Fest um, on September 15th and 16th or October 5th through the 8th, 2018. Your price is only $40, well, $39.99, so you're saving over 50%. And um, again, this information is located in the front of the village hall. And that's all I have. One quick note, too. I mentioned to Trustee Murphy right before the meeting. I had a meeting with our health inspector. And uh, we're really getting inundated with a lot of uh, municipal violations for people not cutting their grass, especially in backyards. People are letting their grass go, something terrible. 
and we're doing our best to keep up with you too but it's unfortunate I just want to make it a record there's for the record just to say there's no excuse not to cut your grass I mean this is crazy um, this is actually becomes a habitat for rodents and whatnot and um, people aren't even you know, using the weed whipper you know, like like letting the grass grow up against the side of the garages and everything else yet too so we're doing our best to um, get folks to comply and certainly we look like the bad guys here but all we're doing is looking out for the health of you and your neighbors and stuff then too so uh, traffic safety, Trustee Dalzell. No report, Mayor. Any presentations, petitions, or communications? Any unfinished business? Uh, just for the record, I did want to let everybody know that even though it appeared that the audio singly was not recording, the video had been recording the whole time, and there is audio associated with the video. Correct. So the meeting is complete on video. Brian, um, I'm sorry, had confirmed that for me. All right. Nothing inappropriate was done or said, except we mentioned, <laughs> we mentioned the bears, and that was bad enough and stuff. So, you know. I'm sorry. I All was right. there. Thank you. Um, next is the uh, any new business. Then can I get a motion to adjourn? Make a motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you very much, folks, for joining us this evening. We'll adjourn this meeting at um, 9.35. Thank you for joining us.